Welcome back. You're watching On The Spot. My name is Patrick Kamara and my guest tonight is the retired Major Okui Rabon. In 2001, Major Okui Rabon, you felt threatened and uh, went to exile. I think you lived in Scotland, but you returned. So what changed mm. for you to feel much safer to now? In regard to... I was given assurances by the government of the Republic of Uganda that what happened would not be repeated. And uh, thankfully, I'd like to thank the government of Uganda that they kept their word that uh, on arrival at Entebbe was not... You are thanking as if they are giving you something like a token. I mean, isn't that if your freedom is, is entitled to you? No, it was a gentle, uh, gentleman's yeah, argument. Why would a major requirement thank the government of Uganda for just allowing you to live free in your country? Why was I arrested in the first place? Because up to now, I've never been taken to court for any offense. The very fact that I was arrested. To give you a freedom is not a token of appreciation, sir. Well, I was arrested. I was never taken to court. I went to exile. But somebody saw it fit to say, come back. Now I can sleep in my bed and, and uh, I have no case to answer I am thankful you had issues to do with the lack of proper institutions that institutions should have been used to give you freedom and guarantee you freedom so that if you go wrong then the same institutions can be able to be used to punish you now the building of institutions since you are now in the Center for Constitutional Governance, is still wobbly. Doesn't that concern you? It does, deeply. It does. And that's why this struggle has to be uh, pursued re relentlessly. It cannot be a one-man affair. It has to be a national struggle through all avenues possible. That's why we are talking to the young generation. Our activities are in 25 universities across the country. Um, other civil society organizations are also exploring other areas of our society where uh, these campaigns can be launched. What are you telling these university students in 25 universities? There are various thematic areas that they discuss in regard to institutionalization, the role of parliament, the role of uh, the courts, the role of the academia, the role of traditional institutions, human rights, very exciting debates. If you attend them, some of them uh, are more exciting than uh, those we see at national level. It's exciting to see young people address these critical areas of our national development. So what should we expect in 2016 with the levels of apathy, despondency, and the role of money in elections, in your view? Yeah, when you talk about what the issues that were raised in uh, 2001, I remember where commercialization of politics was one of our grievances. First, the, 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 there was commercialization of politics, there was the role of the military, in electoral processes and uh, I'm afraid these are the very same more than uh, how many years now from 2000 14. 14 years down the road uh, these are the same demands that that are being put forward by the political parties opposition political parties and civil society and <coughs> they have not been resolved mm -hmm. so for uh, genuine electoral reforms to take place, these issues have to be addressed. And it's really a pity that we have to take this long before we get this agenda out of the way and uh, put, take Uganda forward. There's a goal because goal. for us to be a, 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 for us to, 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 to be a modern democratic country, to be recognized internationally as a modern country, these issues have to be addressed, finished, so that we can go forward to other issues of economic development and 
your and colleagues, and your colleagues in the civil society and members of the opposition have been moving around Uganda calling for electoral reforms. Do you see them making any inroads in having these electoral reforms available here before 2016? You know, it, it's not a question between government, civil society, and political parties only, in my opinion. In my opinion, it's a question of building the civic competence. Because my experience in politics is that uh, these reforms cannot be granted. These reforms have to be won. And they've, been to, uh, they, they've got to be demanded. There has to be a critical mass of citizenry saying that this is what we want to be the political order. But that's in your our job country. as CCG, isn't it? To create at least to add into that civic engagement, to create some kind of a civic engagement. Because today what we hear from Ugandans, everybody is saying to Saba government, to Yambi. People uh, do not know even their rights, yes, well, let alone the responsibilities. Yes, civil society organizations are waging a war against the Saba government, to Yambi. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of mentality. <laughs> that kind of mentality. Mm -hmm. So building civic competence means <coughs> talk to the people, Tell them that it is their role, it's their constitutional role, it's their responsibility, and it's their right to have a free and fair election. But also, it's their responsibility to make sure that uh, they do not receive money. And money is not disbursed, because it's their own money anyway, finally. So, for, their for, for, if I am understanding you, for Uganda to have some serious change, there should be a shift of mindset of Ugandans who will understand what it takes to bring change and then they maybe not accept the money or they hold the government to account. They demand, they know their rights and they know their responsibilities. If we can, what will it take to have a civic engagement of that level? This, there has to be a paradigm shift because Ugandans have always been looking for a savior. A savior to remove Idi Amin. And that's why they looked at uh, President Yoweri Museven as a savior for a very long time. The person personification of politics. Mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and it's really absurd. Because genuine transformation is done by large masses of people. So we have to have a critical mass of citizens who say, this is the road we have traversed as a nation. And we don't want to go back. And this is what we demand. And the politicians who are leading have to see that mass and feel it. That there is a, a critical mass of Ugandans who don't want this state of affairs to continue. Once that critical mass has not been reached, the, the, the status quo will remain. I don't know whether you understand me, Patrick. Yes, so the role of the political parties and civil society is to have unfettered access to the people, to give them the platforms to engage on these matters so that they can demand what is rightfully theirs and so that they can push their country forward because it's the, their interest. So, yeah, well, which brings me again to the question what will it take for the people to have what I could call some kind of positive anger for them to have the change that they want to see? What, is, what spark will it be? They don't need a spark. The, the, the problems are all around them. We are talking about issues of land. We are talking about potholes on our streets. We are talking about the dysfunctional health systems. You, you read the newspapers every day. You see the lack of drugs in the health centers. You see the, the, the levels of education in the UPE schools. You see the lack of... Uh, of sanitation and clean water for people to drink, you see teenage preg pregnancies, you see the stealing of drugs, you see uh, corruption from... The newspapers are inundated with stories of corruption so, every so day. What, what you're describing sounds like a sick government. Absolutely. You, you open any newspaper any day. You will not fail to, to find no, a story of corruption. Your research, is that what you find also? Look, we have how many districts? More than 100 districts. Some of those districts, districts are supposed to be um, production centers. Because they are supposed to produce revenue. 
for government. But uh, our research has shown us that uh, most districts are dysfunctional as we speak right now. And we've been talking about decentralization, uh, decentralization for the last 15 years. Uh, districts cannot pay, teachers cannot be paid properly, uh, teachers, uh, health, health workers are not being paid, uh, roads are not being fixed. Uh, why does this happen when Uganda is a country with the potential to have things done? The president himself agrees that money for NADs is disbursed from the center to the districts, but nothing is being seen on the ground. In the last campaign, he told the people of Uganda, I'm sorry, I sent this money, but I don't know where it goes. So he agreed that the NADs project is failing. But that's a leadership problem on his part as well, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. The, 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 as the Americans say, the buck stops with, the, with him. So uh, we have to rethink our system of governance and see how we can make Uganda work. And, uh, and this is what we are talking about from the beginning. How do we, what does the constitution say about constructing institutions that allow our country to work? Because we are not short of resources. This country has embarked on major infrastructure developments, like roads, like power generation, and things like that, with intention, if I'm getting them correct, those in the, in, in, in the movers and, and, and shakers, is that you develop the infrastructure, then you attract both local and international investors, you develop the economy, then Ugandans are better. Is that a good that a good move? Well, uh, d d d national development. Because you give it to them, the roads are not as bad as they used to be. Well, it's a, it's a, uh, we have to go deep into research, and I don't think it's within the time limits of this program to uh, to, to cover all that. But experts will tell you that uh, the lifespan of our roads is between three to five years let's say and uh, internationally recognized thickness of uh, a bitumen rod is supposed to be 20 centimeters in uganda we do eight and uh, not take into consideration the, the 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 rock base that this road is going to have so why do the, all those things happen um we have some institutions which we have tried to build like PPDA, we try to oversee the contractual processes, uh, but uh, many people still complain that the award co uh, awarding of contracts has not been transparent, and the companies which are involved. But all these governance problems finally come to uh, the question of, 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 of lack of strong institutions that everybody has to run to some principal master key for things to get done and grant it to him the chief executive of this country is only human okay. he cannot attend to issues of foreign affairs security in sudan somalia roads power dams he's only human and the, and, and, and the day has only 24 hours. So he needs institutions. So it needs institutions. And that's what the constitution prescribes. And we who are involved in uh, the civil society work that, that, that uh, urges for developing these institutions find it extremely frustrating that institutions are not being built and empowered to be able to plan and execute the work of national development. Hold on to your point. Uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, I just want to drill deep and understand the retired Major Queer Abonde man, a man who has served the armies of three nations. Don't go away.